Good morning my friends, welcome back to my channel. Hopefully we are back on track now with regular programming. It's good to have you along and I'm still really tired after a busy weekend, a fun weekend. Um, as you know I've been to a, a mask do, shall we say, a mask party and I'm still feeling a bit tired but it was all in such a good cause. So today, you can probably see, I don't know if you can see off to the side here, is a whole bunch of um, embroidery threads. I've got a bunch of tiny wee fabric scraps here. And today I am inspired by some happy mail that I received a wee while ago from the beautiful Mari. And one of the pieces she included was this gorgeous little fabric cluster. It is just, it makes me so happy. Uh, it's four layers of fabric tied through with some embroidery floss and into a bow. And I just love it. And I was looking at this going, this would be perfect in the journals that I'm making at the moment for a commission. But I don't want to part with it. I want to put this in my own journal. So why not make some more? <laughs> so that's what we're going to do today. We are going to make up just some cute little fabric clusters with the embroidery thread because I have never done that before. I've put cotton or embroidery th thread through but generally tied it off, uh, not in a bow. And I just think the bow is so cute. Like, isn't that just the cutest thing? I also like the odd shapes. I think that is so, so fun. So I went through my big bag of quilting scraps from my friend and just grabbed out the little bits or in some cases it was a bigger bit that had like this odd shape attached to it and I just cut it off. Um, bits that have got weird shapes to them, uh, just little scrappy bits that I thought, um, you know, probably not much use for a lot of things. Just little bits and pieces. So... I'm going to make some clusters and in this wee sample they've all been pinked. Most sides, not all sides, like this cool funky shape here has just been left raw and I love that. So I'm going to aim for a combination as well. So let's get started. I've got no real kind of idea in mind. I'm just going to grab from this pile and we shall see what we get um, I think I want to leave this kind of jaggedy edge there and so maybe what I'll do is I'll construct a few clusters and then we'll do the sewing so maybe just lay out a few bases to start with uh, some bits are a bit bigger and some are a bit smaller So yes, I am I'm tired because it, although it wasn't a super late night, it was late for us. We're normally in bed by 10. Doesn't matter whether it's the weekend or a weekday, we're in bed, bed by 10. Well, it was quarter to 12 by the time we got to bed on Saturday night. So for us, that is late. And I was going into it already tired. So that didn't help. But I still had fun. It was such a blast. Uh, so if you are just new here and, and haven't caught up with all the the preamble to the weekend, um, my husband and I went to a mask. It's hard to know what to call it because it was a, a dinner, a midwinter masquerade. We are, you only had to wear a mask uh, for my hubby's work. And we went full costume and there was maybe five people that went in full costume so not many but more than what I was expecting so that was fun um, that might not be a base layer that might be more of a, a top layer but we'll see um, yeah so it was it was just so fun and seeing everyone's reactions when they saw my husband in his full-on beast costume so we're Beauty and the Beast, and he had full-on 
face mask but it was a head mask so it had horns and hair and um it was a latex latex mask so he was he was fully and so all you could see was his eyes and a little bit of his lips and some people couldn't tell who it was until either they hugged him and he spoke to them or they realized that I was standing right beside him and then because I was right beside him they could work it out uh, so that was just super fun seeing people's reactions it was so fun his boss just burst out laughing when he realized who it was um, there were a couple of people who actually said I don't know who you are um, so yeah it was, it was really fun really really fun I think I might pink all of these and watching other people in the restaurant venue as well watching their reactions when he walked up to the bar because we were the first ones there actually uh, first ones to arrive and uh, he walked up to the bar in his costume and the staff all thought it was great but some of the patrons like just their reactions that that full-on laughing and then I'm not looking but I'm looking you know how you can't they you kind of look sideways because you're not going to be rude enough to stare but you still want to look <laughs> and of course they didn't know that I was watching them watching so funny right I think that's a cool funky little shape there um sorry I'm not talking much about what I'm actually doing so hopefully you just I mean it's not difficult it's just kind of make it however you want it that little scrap that can just be a top layer on something maybe on the purple let's do a little strip of this this is super cute fabric it's got all these paw prints and then every now and then it's got a little mouse colorful mouse it's really fun maybe we'll just give it one pink a small pink edge I got so covered in strings when I was digging through the bag pulling out all the little bits and pieces yeah so what else can I tell you about the night um, the venue the venue was super cool we have been to that restaurant before but when it was in a different location so it used to be really easy to find and now it's very hard but it's and it's a lot bigger than it was where they used to have it um, but it's kind of got that exclusivity factor to it because it's so hard to find it hasn't got roadside access it's in a place called the strip where you know you can't there's no cars allowed um, and it's right next to a, a big mall the original mall of Christchurch where there's no vehicles allowed apart from delivery vehicles so we got dropped off by a taxi on oh it felt like a couple of blocks away I don't know that it was but we didn't know where it was so we went round and round in circles looking for this place and in the end it was kind of down an alley and up a, up a couple of flights of stairs and so we eventually found it but it wasn't hard, you know it wasn't easy to find and there were no signposts for it until you actually got to the alleyway and right at the bottom of the staircase was the name of the restaurant that's the <laughs> like it was so hard to find but it was beautiful absolutely beautiful inside um just kind of distressed mirrors like that black crazing yeah you get on mirrors so you walk in and all the walls are just these mirrors and then there's pot plants and various things that just look amazing and then you go through this big big door you push it open it's like double width door wooden door and then you've got a choice to go to the bar or the restaurant uh one's to the left and one's to the right and so when we arrived the table wasn't ready so we were ushered into the bar and told we could wait there and then the boss and his wife and son turned up and then we got shifted to a different part of the bar because they needed the part that we initially went into they needed it for a, another group 
Um, so that was fine. And then it wasn't too long before we actually went through to the restaurant and everybody started arriving and just lots of hilarity. Super, super fun. I thoroughly recommend if you get an opportunity to go to a mask or a dress up or something like that, don't be shy. Don't be, um, don't be a party pooper. I want to say that, like, you know, there were some people that were party poopers. There were some people that didn't even try. Like, they had no mask. They had no intention of ever wearing a mask. They, and one particular person didn't even eat anything because he doesn't like ethnic, ethnic food. It's just like, because mm, the restaurant's kind of like an Asian fusion kind of thing. Super yummy. I should talk about the food as well. Um, I don't know how many I'm making here. I'm just randomly cutting and, and jabbering at you. Hope you don't mind. I just feel like I've got lots of little details I want to tell you before I lose it. Lose the the um, the details, I mean. Not lose my mind or anything, just lose the details. I think I'll put that one on top of that one, maybe. Or do I want to put more like... Maybe more like that and that. So I don't know if I want to cover up all this paisley design. And then I've got this funky bit with a duck's head. Or a goose, not sure. It's a bird. Maybe we could put that one. I like that. Maybe just take that off a little bit. It's a little bit kind of too ratty, I think. Maybe that one. We'll make that one. Um, I think my problem too is like colours be bearing in mind the colours and each one I take out is kind of not matching with another one the, perhaps the way I would like it to um, so we had essentially a three course meal um, but it was like platters plates of food that came out and you helped yourself um, to the plates and so entree was a wonton stuffed generously stuffed with mince minced meat um, there was scallops on individual little s spoons that you just like put into your mouth and sucked off the scallop they were super yummy. And then there was these little baby spinach leaf parcels. So the leaves were arranged and then this mixture was on top and it was spicy and nutty and tangy. So it had citrus, it had chilli, it had like peanuts. It was very, very tasty. And then other ingredients, um, which I can't, I didn't even take much notice. It was just a flavour bomb. So you kind of pick it up fold in the leaves to wrap it up and then you pop it in your mouth <laughs> that was the idea they gave instructions on how to eat it um, it was just a flavor packed hit it was so tasty very very yummy um, I couldn't fit it all in my mouth so I had to have it in two bites so it did get a little messy for me but that's okay we can handle mess um so that was entree and I didn't eat my wonton. I put it straight into my little doggy bag container because I knew I wouldn't be able to eat a lot, So, but I didn't want to miss out. So I put some of my serving of each course directly into a container to take home with me. So guess what I had for lunch today? I had leftovers from Saturday night. Uh, main course, so delicious. We had crispy skin duck with a mandarin kind of sauce and it's all sliced up so you just take a slice or two slices onto your plate and then it you know goes around for your end of the table um we had what else did we have we had blue cod and like a mushroom duck cell which is like a mushroom reduced mushroom reduction i guess it was very tasty um there was pork cubes didn't actually know what it was I didn't have my pork I put it into my container 
uh, but I found out later that it was pork and it was crispy on the outside and like tender as inside and it had a rounded chili on top a little slice of fresh chili which I didn't have I didn't take the chili because it's like I don't want to blow my taste buds away um, so I had that for lunch today and what else was there um, blue cod duck pork and beef cheek the beef cheek was my absolute favorite I didn't have any to bring home which was so sad it was just gorgeous so soft so tasty absolutely beautiful um, and obviously other people found it delicious because there was none left over <laughs> so at the end of the, the main course there was a few bits of duck and a bit of blue cod left over and the boss was trying to find somebody to eat it but nobody wanted them and I says well I can put them in my container and then they won't go to waste and I'll take them home and he's like good idea so the leftover bits there wasn't a lot there was just like three slices of a duck and one bit of blue cod you know one small bit of blue cod like that so I bought those home I've still got some duck out of what I bought home I've still got duck probably actually three slices I think in the container to to have tomorrow and then we moved back through to the bar and they'd sectioned off an area just for our group because we were I don't know 40 40 odd people or more don't know not sure if we count and then they brought out platters of desserts and again the desserts were just in bowls and you helped yourself to a bit of it and onto your plate um, so there was sticky date pudding there was some sort of citrusy yogurt consistency thing I don't know what it was there was a chocolate mousse served in a chocolate coating on a chocolate biscuit and then there were three different types of ice cream so not not many people actually had dessert so we put what was left over I didn't have much dessert I just had a couple, try of a couple of things um, what was left over of the plate closest to us we put into my container apart from the ice cream which hubby, hubby ate because he's an ice cream fiend um, but I didn't want to take too much in case you know somebody came back looking for dessert but I wish I had to put more in because it all just ended up being taken away and dumped by the staff because I don't think people people were too busy for having cocktails and you know that sort of jazz I think they weren't terribly interested in the dessert oh there's a wee bit of lace here don't like the white stitching on the end though take that off that can go in the bin well that might be quite cute there so the food was really really lovely um what would that look like yeah that could go there just gonna oops got a bit of cotton fluff on the back um really good food the staff were onto it they you know they had a really good flow going the only thing that I'm confused about is that one table got served mini sliders, you know, little burgers, twice, and none of the other tables did. Which is fine, because to me they were like the least interesting food anyway, so like, and I wouldn't want all that bread, there's no way I could eat that. So I'm not upset, I'm just kind of confused as to why that was, why only one table out of the four tables got sliders. And it wasn't to do with food allergies, because I, you know, I'm good friends with some of the people on that table, and, well, all, all of the tables, and some people with food allergies would have been at the other end. So I don't know what was, what was up with that, that was just weird to me, very weird. That might be cute on there actually i didn't want to go too color themed but it kind of what make my eyes happy so this is a tiny little bit can we can we make anything with it take that bit off it's also very um creased which makes it a little bit harder to work with
so yeah that that was confusing i was confused about that it just like did the staff accidentally serve the same table um or had someone specifically requested but it was all a set menu so i don't think it would be that someone had requested it um specifically yeah so i don't know don't know just just call me confused <laughs> that was the one thing that confused me and that's okay it's okay to be confused it's not the end of the world and like i said it was the least interesting food in in my book and there was all that wonderful ethnic Asian fusion going on. If anything, the guy who didn't eat because he doesn't like ethnic food, I mean, the sliders would have been perfect for him, but he was on a different table at the far end. So he might have actually appreciated one of those if he had, a, had the opportunity. He did eat before he came, though. So, you know, it wasn't like he was starving all night. I just think it's a shame to not open yourself to different flavours and experiences. But, you know, different strokes for different folks. And that's fine. And I'm glad he came because otherwise his wife would have missed out on the fun. Because he could have chosen not to come. And there were a few people missing. There was one person missing because... Um, his wife and children you know he needed to stay home with the children um, two young preschoolers and the other one other guy and his wife or partner were going to come but then ended up unwell so they had to bow out at the in the afternoon a message came through that they weren't going to make it so that was a shame that they couldn't make it I I think pretty much everyone else was there I think I can't think of anyone obvious who was missing um, I used to work at the same workplace as my hubby so I know most of them quite well and the newer ones I don't know as well but I, I still know them because I spend usually a day a week hanging out in the office so yeah okay this one needs more Hope that, yeah, they're in frame. That's, that's all right. I so had a sudden moment like, am I actually way off for camera? Maybe we go all oh, pink. Mm, it's kind of fun, actually. I was thinking, no, that's going to clash. But they're a similar tone, the red and pink. We might actually, this one's definitely a bright kind of color palette going on bold bright colors okay I think we're gonna stop there and we're gonna do some sewing and then I've got way more scraps here if we decide we want to build more but we're getting through the time whoops so I've got a, a quite a sizable needle because I wanted a big enough hole to get my thread through and I'm probably going to be switching out colors of thread maybe this for the green one although i want it to show don't i would that show up enough maybe this one's better rather than the pale green and i'm looking it's like what else can i sew with the green do i want six strands that's the full six strands Let's see if I can get it through the needle. Otherwise I'll halve it and go down to three strands. Come on. Oh, there we go. We got it. Hopefully I've... It's not a very long piece. So from Mari's one, I think all she's done is gone in. And through just a short little stitch and I'm wondering did she go through twice it looks like it might be wrapped twice it's hard to know Mari did you do it once or twice um, once is probably sufficient 
once you tie it off but let's just go through again because we can and then back through oh am I on camera I do apologize if I was too far off screen I was trying to see what I was doing and this way you don't have to knot it and it's not as bulky which I thought was actually just quite ingenious and then I probably have not given myself self enough thread to use, but just makes means it's a little bit more fiddly. So I'm learning as I go. Oops, I can't grab it. <laughs> Come here. Come on. Ah. You don't want to sit here and watch me fumble, do you? I'm sure you don't. Ah, there we go. I got it. And my tail is way too small. But that's okay. It's cute. Give that a trim up so they're equalish in length. cute just like that I think what I'm going to do I'll do one more and then I'll pause the camera do the rest because you don't need to see me fumbling around trying to thread a needle or tie a bow you really don't um, but I'll do do another one um, this one's pre-cut length it's only three strands do we perhaps want to Maybe fold it in half to turn it back into six. Again, it might not be actually long enough, but it's doable. We've proved it's doable. Uh, now, what, what do we want to do this on? Maybe this darker one. And so just choose a place where all three are overlapping. Oh, wrong way. We need to go from the front to the back. So go from the top and then bring it back in around to the top again. This one I'll just do once just so I can test which way is better. And let's even that up so we've got enough length to play with. And we'll snip that loop. Whoops, if I can get that. There we go. Snip the loop. And I am going to just tie this, since we've only gone through once, I'm just going to tie that in a little half knot. And then fiddle with it until I like the size of the bow and the size of the tails, or length of the tails, I should say. We tighten. Oh, I like that how the um, tails are actually diagonally opposite. That's kind of fun. Not what I was going for, but it's it's actually I don't mind it. So there's number two. Aren't they cute and so so simple and using tiny wee scraps? Okay, I'm going to pop you on pause now. And I'm going to finish up the rest, then come back and show you them completed. And then I think that's about it, because I have an appointment at three and it's half past two right now. So I'll be back in a moment. And they are done. I am so glad I paused the camera because it is now like ten to three. It took me so long. I uh, just even down to choosing which colour of thread I was wanting to use. So uh, we did this one. And I've lost track of which ones we did on camera. Uh, did we do this one? Yes, we did that one because the opposites. Um, is that all we did? Anyway, let's take a look at them. So this cute little one. 
with purple and this purple um, embroidery floss is one that Mari sent me in happy mail as well so thank you Mari it's I didn't have that purple so it's coming in super handy I've got a couple of the pink ones here whoops where are we in in frame Brr. maybe back out a little I hope I hope they're in focus that I'm not getting up too close for you guys um, I can't tell whether it's focusing or not. There's this cute wee yellow one. And it's actually this top fabric's a basket with toy cats in it. Stuffed toy cats. So I wanted to make sure that the bow didn't obscure the cats there. So I've just put it on the basket. Uh, this one is the last one I did. And I had a bit of a trouble with the embroidery. It just won't sit the way I want it to. I don't know what's up with it. But I can always... Add a little bit of glue to glue it in the position I want. It just, it's being a bit funky for whatever reason. This one with the wee bit of lace, I really love that one. I think that one turned out really cute. So all different sizes here. This blue one here, I did trim a little bit off this top fabric because it was all twisty and creased and folded and I didn't like it. So I trimmed it off and now I'm really happy with it. And then this one, I did have this fabric on this one as well, and I removed it because I liked it better without it. And it's got a little duck on the fabric there. Just so cute, so fun, so easy to do. And you don't need a lot of material. You just need tiny wee scraps. So I was thinking... Um, do I have anything just to give you a wee peek? I mean, I, I wouldn't put one on this, um, but say this tag, for example, you know, you could just sit a bit on the edge of a tag, like so, or you could use it as a topper. I mean, that would be really pretty. I definitely don't want to add anything to this particular tag. Um, what else? I've got this little journaling spot here. Um, you could put, you know, how cute is that? I wouldn't put that one that way though because the cats are sideways. Uh, that one needs to go more like this. And don't want to do that to cover up our bee there. But if the bee wasn't there, that would look super cute on the corner of that journaling card. Um... So yeah, just super fun. Or you can put it on a page. Sorry, I'm just trying to grab out a page here. This one will do. This is um, just a flip out signature page that I've made out of book pages. And you could use one, let's choose maybe this one. You could put it as a little t tab on the side of the page. You know, just sit it out so it's out off the page a little bit. Can you see that? Maybe if I take it down a bit, it might be easier to see. Super cute. Lots of ways you can use them. Really fun, really easy. Thoroughly recommend it if you've got just tiny scraps of fabric. You don't need huge meters or half a meter or even 10 centimeters of fabric. You just need scraps. Get your sewing friends Call them up saying, have you got a scrap bag of bits that are too small but you just don't want to throw them away? Do you mind if I have them please? Um, and yeah, or go raid your, your local op shop, thrift shop. Um, put a message on social media, on your local community groups seeing if anyone's got some offcuts of fabric that they don't need or some old clothing even that is just only good for cutting up because it's got holes or stains or whatever. Um, you probably got some of those at your home if you're anything like me. Um, I don't tend to throw them out. They just kind of sit around forever in a day, which is not helpful. So cut them up. Turn them into something really cool and useful. And I'm just going to take a moment to put my needle away before I lose it into my foot or my arm or what have you. Always be safe, guys. Always be safe. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this Trash Craft Tuesday. I hope you're inspired to do something like this. So this is my inspiration from the wonderful Mari. It's so pretty. And these are what I've 
done today so take care i'll be back again tomorrow uh, i'm probably going to be doing roxy's weekly challenge tomorrow so i hope you'll come and join me for that see you then bye guys